They are they are not very thankful on socialmedia.com. Stop stop being mean. Stop being mean to this man. Uh, this man is mean to the team, the Chargers across the street, SoFi Stadium. He could be the L.A. County champion. They, they've got the Rams at home. Are we starting Dak Prescott? I kind of gave it away a little bit here oh. by having it pre-selected, but uh, we are sitting Dak Prescott this week, and you bring up the Chargers game, and I know he had his... Oh, Marianne making an appearance. Marianne went viral at that game, but he had his best game of the year against the Chargers. One, that is the best possible matchup for a quarterback. And two, it came because of his legs. Uh, 40 rushing yards and a touchdown. That's 10 fantasy points on the ground. In every other game, he has less than three, so I don't think we can rely on that. He has one multiple passing touchdown game, has not reached 275 passing yards. With no teams on bye this week, it's going to pain my Uncle Danny to say this. I think we should sit. There we Prescott. go. Prescott, double sit. If, if you're a fan of button pressing, we, we got you covered <laughs> uh, here on Fantasy Live. We'll go from Dak to Joe Burrow, who we were sitting earlier in the season. They look a lot better now. Is this a smash start for Joe? Yeah, I'm giving Joe Burrow the benefit of the doubt, again, even against the 49ers, and starting him partially. Start him! There we go, Marianne. Partially because... He looked healthy the last two weeks before the bye. Now he gets the bye to rest up. We know that a healthy Joe Burrow is matchup proof and someone that you want to get in your lineup. And yes, the Niners are his toughest test yet. They're better against the run, though, at stopping the run than they are the pass. We just saw Kirk Cousins and the Vikings light them up. If they could do it, I like to think Joe Burrow and the Bengals can as well. I mean, the, the, the clock is PJ Walker, Kirk Cousins. I mean, we're, we're going to start worrying about this Niners. Deep. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But. <laughs> Good football players uh, make plays, as Kirk Cousins was on Monday night. But then there's Eugene Cyril Smith going up against the Browns defense, who saw Gardner Minshew go off against them. Are we starting Geno? I don't know what happened to the Browns defense last week, but like you were saying earlier, they've been elite. I'm sitting Geno Smith in this one. And the Browns defense is only part of the story. Geno Smith has just not been the same guy that we saw last season. He is top 16 fantasy points just once. He flopped last week when I had him as a start against the Cardinals and the Browns, like Patrick was saying earlier. They've allowed the fewest passing yards per game, one passing touchdown per game, and the fifth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. You're going to have to have to call up. Uh, he won't He won't write back. Yeah, that's the thing. Got to use the phone. He's not like Aaron Rodgers, though. You, you can you can call. You don't have to specifically face down. Let's get some running backs. <laughs> Damian Pierce, slow start to the season. You have faith, maybe, in Damian Pierce in week eight? I'm giving him one more shot. I'm starting Damian Pierce, and it's largely because of the matchup against the Carolina Panthers. But like you said, a rough start to the season for Pierce. My hope is that he and the Texans O-line could get right during their bye week. But again, the Panthers They've allowed the third most rushing yards, most touchdowns, second most fantasy points per game, and they really struggle on outside runs against running backs, and Damian Pierce has more than double anyone else on the team. I will say, though, I think Devin Singletary is a little bit sneaky uh, as a deep sleeper in this one as well. Oh, sneaky spot for Devin Singletary. Damian Pierce, keep your eyes up. Watch <laughs> out uh, for Devin Singletary. We'll leave Damian Pierce. It gets a Najee Harris, who got vultured by his quarterback last week in SoFi Stadium. Are we starting Najee? I'm sadly saying to sit Najee Harris. The big reason is the matchup against the Jaguars. Right now, look, Najee Harris, I know he's coming off his best game of the season, but he has less than seven fantasy points in over half his games, and the Jaguars have allowed the fourth fewest rushing yards and just two rushing touchdowns to running backs all season. Their weakness is against pass-catching running backs, but Jalen Warren has more than double the amount of targets as Najee Harris, and if the Steelers are in catch-up mode, I think he'll be the running back that they use. I actually would play Jalen Warren over Najee Harris. Yeah, it's it's kind of a find-out week to see if the Steelers' offense can muster up what they did last week against the Los Angeles Rams. And then there's Rashad White. The Bucks have struggled running the ball, but Rashad White actually got some points last week. Are we starting him this week? The internet's like, just say sit him already. He's a sit every week. I'm going to surprise oh. you guys and say to start him against my Buffalo Bills. Why? Because the Bills defense has not, <laughs> has not been the same since they lost Milano and Jones and Trey White and all of those guys. White topped 15 fantasy points last week. He gets the Bills who've allowed the seventh most yards to running backs, and they allow 4.9 yards per carry, the fourth highest mark in the NFL. All the volume is going to Rashad White. If he struggles in this one, then we really got to start wondering if we could ever trust Rashad White. Yeah, it's like how many fantasy viable bucks might there be? Uh, this is it. 
Uh, this is it for Rashad White. And this is it for you, NFL.com slash start sit. We love getting start sit questions, but Florio's pounding the pavement every week. It's with the starts and sits on the internet. Go check them out before you hit us up. Here's, we got some more for you uh, as, as we look at some starts this week on Michael F. Florio, Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford got sits for Jordan Love running backs, Brees Hall and Miles Sanders getting some starts as well. Uh, let's get to some of these wide receivers and tight ends. Zay Flowers, the whole the whole Ravens offense went off against the Lions. Are we starting them in week eight? Oh, no doubt about it. We are starting Zay Flowers. Just get the rookie in your lineup each and every week. He has double digits in all but one game this year, so the floor is extremely safe. But I think this is a ceiling game for him as he gets the Cardinals who run zone on 80% of their plays. Flowers has picked up 88% of his yards this year against zone coverage and his lone touch. Touchdown. He thrives against zone. He has struggled admittedly against man, but who cares? They don't play man. You start him. Yes, another start for Zay Flowers. Uh, as you know, you have Lamar time to pick apart a defense, and he's going to find number four. That's what we found out this season. This season, it hasn't been what we were looking for for T. Higgins. We hope he's back and healthy. If those are true, is he a start? This could blow up in my face, but shoot or shoot, right? I'm going to say you sit T. Higgins this week. And there we go. Marianne agrees. Uh, the reason I think you should sit him is because, like Patrick said, just one big game this year. Besides that, he has been held under five points in every other contest, and he could be healthy now coming off the bye, but the Niners run zone coverage 78% of the time. Higgins has averaged one yard per route and has a 37.7 pass rating when targeted against zone. With no teams on bye this week, I kind of want to take a wait-and-see approach. Of, and 49. Yeah, the, the 49ers, again, Niners D scored two points uh, this week. Niners are on notice. Fred Warner, we're coming from – no, I'm just kidding. They're, they're still a very, <laughs> very good defense. Nico Collins, we had, to, we had to wait. The Texans on the bye still feeling the hot start. Oh, I am – Riding with Nico Collins everywhere I have him, which is a decent amount of my team. Marianne agrees. Get him into your starting lineup. He has topped 80 yards and 12 fantasy points in four of six games and twice has really blown up for 27 or more points. One of those came against the Colts, who run the most zone coverage in the league. Now he gets the Panthers, who are the only team that he could face that runs it less than the Colts. They run it in top three in the league. 70% of his yards this year have come against zone. 70%. So we'll, that's a huge number. We'll see how Nico Collins does. We'll leave the wide receivers to get to some tight ends. It was a deep tease from Florio talking about Dalton Kincaid. What do you do with him on Thursday Night Football? I'm not even going to make you guys sweat it out. I am not telling you to sit the league-winning tight end potentially off the winning. waiver wire. Look, he had a breakout game last week catching all eight of his targets for 75 yards. But what you won't see in the box score is that the biggest play for the Bills in that game, a fourth down when they were trailing by a touchdown late in the game was a design pass play for the rookie and Dawson Knox is now out the upside is so high as I think he could be Josh Allen's number two target even in what looks like a tough matchup on paper start Kincaid we have been chronicling some tight end start sit storylines this year of course there's Kyle Pitts but we're still waiting for the opportunity for Michael Florio to tell you to start David and Joku so we got him back up here what are we doing we, we are not starting David Njoku this week. I, I'm sorry. Look, I, I do understand that both of his best fantasy games have come without Deshaun Watson this year, so I guess he has that going for him. But he is yet to – he's only top 50 yards once this year. He is yet to score a touchdown. Now he gets the Seahawks who have allowed the seventh fewest yards and not a single touchdown to the tight ends position plus backup quarterback, no teams on by. You, you have better options than Njoku this week. All right, we'll find out next week if we're finally going to start <laughs> David and Joku. And then there's Darren Waller, who finally got in the end zone. That was actually the first time the Giants scored at home all season long was when he wow. scored that pass from Terod Taylor. We starting him this week? Oh, we are starting him. Darren Waller has been my guy this year. I told you to keep sticking with him. Marianne agrees. Go and get him in the starting lineup. He is now a top five fantasy tight end. I know that did that looked wild after the first three weeks of the season. People were ready to give up on him. He is the third most yards behind only Kelsey and Hawkinson. He finally found the end zone, and now he gets the Jets. And I know you might be thinking the Jets are really scary. They have allowed the most fantasy points per game and the most touch 
touchdowns, two tight ends. So with Taylor hopefully starting still, get Waller in your lineup. There it is, the Battle of New Jersey uh, going to Darren <laughs> Waller. Jersey. Jersey. Well, I'm standing here with Florio, so we have to acknowledge <laughs> uh, the state that the Buffalo Bills play in. Some more starts and sits. He's got a start again for Scary Terry. Drake London getting a start. Taysom and Josh Ferguson are starts. And then New Hopkins, Jerry Judy, Luke Musgrave, and Hunter Henry are all sits.